Here's an interesting problem you can solve using the skills we've developed in this playlist so far. So we're given a curve here, f of x, and it says given f of x equals 5, take half x squared, and f of x is greater than 0, find the minimum distance from O to P. So we're looking at this line segment O to P, and we're trying to minimize its length. So P is a point, any point on this curve x, y. Uh, so essentially we're looking for the shortest distance from O to the curve. Uh, we've learned how to find the derivative of functions and find the minimums using that derivative. So we're going to apply that knowledge here. The first thing we want is an expression for the length of OP in relation to X. And we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem for that. So if we draw a right triangle, a vertical from P down to the X axis, uh, that gives us a right triangle with a base of X and a height of F of X and the hypotenuse is OP, so we can say OP squared equals the base squared, X squared, plus the height squared, F of X all squared. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug F of X in there. This is going to be five take a half X squared all squared. And then let's go ahead and expand out these brackets and simplify. Now we have an expression for the length of OP in terms of X. Uh, so if we let, let OP equal some function g of x, for example, we can differentiate this, and then we're going to be able to find the minimums of that function. So let's find uh, g dash of x. So applying the power rule to each term in this function, that will give us x cubed take 8x. The plus 25 is just 0. The derivative of any constant is always 0. Um, and now... Remember how to find the stationary points of this function? We let it equal zero. So when, when x cubed take 8x equals zero, are we going to have 8x times x take 8 equals zero? x squared, sorry, take 8 equals zero. And then that gives us solutions of x equals zero or x squared take 8 equals zero. And this gives us solutions for x. If we add 8 to both sides, take the square root, we get plus or minus uh, 2 root 2. So we have the x coordinates of the stationary points of this function here. Now we need to find the nature of those stationary points. To do that, we use the second derivative. So g dash dash of x, again, uh, differentiating the derivative, applying the power rule to both, time, both terms, that gives us 3x squared take 8. And now we want to find g dash dash of x at these points. Let's start with 2 root 2. So plugging 2 root 2 into g dash dash of x, and I don't need to, well, I could actually do both at the same time because I'm squaring it. So let's say we plug in plus and minus 2 root 2, so we can find out the nature of both of them. This will be 3 times plus or minus 2 root 2 all squared take 8, which gives us, that's 3 times 8 take 8, which is 16. This is greater than 0. Remember what that means? That means these are minimums of this function. So therefore we could say we have minimums, minimums when x equals plus or minus two root two. Now we don't have to worry about finding the nature of the x equals zero point because we know this is a positive quartic, which looks something like this. And if we have two minimums already, we know that third one will be a maximum. So we're almost there we found the x value for when the length of OP is at a minimum. We just need to go ahead and plug that into OP and that will give us the minimum length. Uh, so plugging in two root two into this expression here, if I plug it in here, that looks like the easiest. So let's say OP squared equals two root two all squared plus five, take a half times two root two all squared, uh, 2 root 2 squared, all squared. And evaluating this, this is 8, 2 root 2 squared is 8, plus uh, a half times 8 is 4, so in the brackets here we've got 5 take 4 all squared, which is 1, so in the end we get 8 plus 1, which is 9, and remember that's OP squared. So therefore, if we take the square root, we know OP is equal to three. And because we're talking about a length, we just take the positive value. Uh, so there we go. 
Uh, I hope you found that problem interesting, finding that minimum length to a curve using all of the knowledge we've learned in this playlist so far. If you found that useful, please leave a like and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.